The following video features excerpts taken from four recorded live lessons on using Scratchboard to create an image of a cat. For more on how you can access weekly live lessons like this and this complete lesson series, as well as video courses, ebooks, lesson plans, and more, visit thevirtualinstructor.com forward slash members. So we are working with Scratchboard. Uh, some people like to call it Scraper Board. You'll also, or, or Scrape Board, Scratch, uh, Scratch Board, Scraper Board. It goes by all different types of names. Also Clay Board. Um, we're using the Scratch Board, or I'm using the Scratch Board Papers, which are great for practicing. You can create finished works with them, but they're very cheap and inexpensive. They're not going to give you the same defined lines as if you actually took Clay Board and put a layer of India ink over the top of it. But basically, Scratch Board is a surface. It's got a thin layer of china clay on it. Um, and the ink, the India ink, is, is layered over the top. So what you do is you basically scratch away the India ink, and you reveal the white of the clay underneath. Now there's... All right, I'm going to actually start in the highlight. And I'm going to go ahead and just start removing some of the ink here. And... Yeah. You know, if you start going a little quicker than you're comfortable with the scratch board, you'll find that you start chipping away a little bit more ink than you intended. And I think you might be starting to see now, if you if you weren't sure, just how much control you can have over the scratch board. And, and this is not completely evident in the reference, but I am going to put a little bit of... You can, kind of barely see it just a little bit of indication of some lighter value right down here so i'm just going to touch the surface just barely and this is just one of those processes <laughs> where there's there's points where you're just making repetitive marks but i think that's the case with any medium where you have this level of control So if you're in an area where you're unsure, just start with some lighter marks, some very light touches with the uh, kind of the precision tool, we'll call it here. You just got to understand that we've got to reverse our thinking here. Um, you know, if you've ever done a drawing on a chalkboard when you were a kid, you probably drew the outlines of the object, and uh, it, you know, it looks funny <laughs> because you're white or you're making marks with a light medium on a black surface. Um, most of us, have, of course, are accustomed to creating dark marks on a light surface because that's how we start writing. Um, you know, we start um, writing by usually with a pencil in our hand, writing our name on a white sheet of paper. So when we start drawing, we get accustomed to adding shadows and leaving highlights. Well, with Scratchboard, the opposite's true. We are basically drawing highlights and leaving shadows. So it's reverse. And it's the, the values get a little bit darker over here near the edge. There's a bigger, darker shape that happens right here. <clears throat> and then... Uh, kind of a gray area and you can see I'm barely scratching the paper at all and then if I'm not sure what I've done I just take my drafting brush and kind of uh, swipe things away here so I can get a better look and I'll zoom in a little bit closer so you can get a better look at the the marks that I'm making here and I'm just pulling in the direction that the hair grows and I'm making a very light touch it may be and remember also it this is you know, whenever you're creating a drawing or a painting or a scratch board, <laughs> uh, scratch board etching, we'll call it, um, you're creating an illusion. So don't get too hung up in how your marks look up close. Instead, kind of concentrate more on what it looks like as a whole. Yes. So for over there, you have so much freedom. to make alterations that don't necessarily affect the outcome of the piece. They can make it better, but they don't necessarily change the piece so much or change the subject so much that it's unrecognizable. This last week, I would try to not make a mistake, <laughs> of course, but if you do accidentally scratch off too much, you, you can use a bit of India ink in, in the bottle with the brush and and just brush it back on there 
But what you might find is that if you're if you were aggressive w when you removed the uh, ink in the first place, you might find that when you try to scratch it off again, it doesn't come off quite as easily. Now, we don't want to remove all of it up here because in between these larger ones that we're going to make now, it, it does get darker. So we want to have that contrast. So now we can start scratching off some of the big ones, the big, thicker portions of hair. So you got lots of overlapping lines that happen right here. And you know, the good thing is, is if we were working with a dark medium, we'd have to go in there and, and draw all those dark marks in between. At the scratch board, we can just make those light marks happen. All right, so uh, we've got a little bit of a, a lighter area of value that happens right about here, and then it comes down, and then there's a little bit of a darker value. And how the marks that we are making right here, you can see they are so abstract. You can see some areas where didn't necessarily you know get scratched off perfectly and so on and how they just you know transition but when we zoom out and take a look at everything in context it uh zoom out very slowly i guess there um <laughs> sorry i'm zooming in and zooming out and zooming in and zooming out uh you can see how things are making sense you can see how the fur looks pretty convincing over here um, and how we've got slow transitions of value where we need to. We've got subtle, subtle changes in value from uh, darker gray, uh, a lighter gray, and then even lighter, almost white out here on the edge. Scratching away, I'm making small marks, and of course I'm trying to follow the cross contour lines, and of course the actual fur is telling me what direction I need to make the strokes. Now, go back and make some of these areas in between those smaller, darker areas, a little bit lighter, and uh, slowly they're gonna start to pop out. You know, it's kind of interesting the way we see things because of contrast. So if we wanna make these little darker sections appear darker, we can make the values around them a little bit lighter, like we're doing here, and those sections will appear a little bit darker under here. And the lines seem to kind of curve out just a bit, where you would think almost the opposite. So I'm, I'm just really trying to concentrate on the light values that I see and the dark values around it. And I'm just getting some marks in place here. And then remember, I can always go back and, and push the values lighter. Uh, you're going to have most success with subjects that are linear, subjects that can be represented in a image with lines. And I know that seems like a, a kind of a duh statement, um, but it, it really is true. Uh, you know, subjects that have softer transitions of values are going to be more difficult. That doesn't mean that you can't do them. But uh, like portraits and things like that, uh, that's going to make things a little bit more difficult. Doesn't, like I said, I've seen plenty of portraits that are awesome with Scratchboard. But uh, it's a little harder to create uh, good, even, smooth transitions of value with a linear medium like Scratchboard. Now I'll go back in, and now I have a good idea of where the transition areas are. And up there's a dark pick out the darker value so it hopefully looks or the lighter value hopefully so it looks like it's different texture than the fur around it one starts and then I'm just going to go for it and I'm just going to start bringing out a line And it's going to curve a little bit down. I'm not going to be really be afraid that I'm going to mess up, but I'm going to try to revisit the same area each time I make that mark. And I'm going to extend these a little bit further down into these darker areas. 
Oops. Just so they're a little more visible. There's all right. So uh, it's complete. I'm pretty happy with it. There's some areas where I feel like I kind of uh, made some marks that were probably a little bit hurried. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel or head over to thevirtualinstructor.com. If you're ready to learn even more, then I encourage you to check out our extensive membership program, which includes access to video courses, weekly live lessons like this one, all of the recorded live lessons, ebooks, lesson plans, and much, much more. To learn more about our program, just click on the button in the middle of the screen or click on the card in the upper right hand corner. Thank you so much for watching.